She's here. Who's here? She's here. Doris dear. It's Doris with a cocktail in She's the perfect husband of the sun by the way. It does? Yeah, maybe. It's Doris. everyone, Doris Dear, America's Perfect Housewife here. Welcome back to the Rumpus Room. Now, I've just been going through some of my old Broadway record albums, and boy, the Rumpus Room was always rocking with these albums when Taffy and Duke had friends over. Now, today, I'm so excited to share with you some super fun food history. You know, growing up on Staten Island with my parents, Taffy and Duke, and my sister, Nancy, well, that was a barrel of fun. Taffy and Duke really enjoyed life and lived it out loud, just like me. Let me tell you, that rumpus room was swinging all night on a Saturday evening. All their friends would come over, all dressed up, and my sister, Nancy, and I would sneak down the stairs and listen to all the giggling and the laughing and the tinkling of the eyes as the Manhattans and Whiskey Sours were bored, and as they listened to those Broadway record albums. Mm. Now, Mom and Dad loved going into the city to see shows and go out to eat, and, well, they were both amazing cooks. Huh. They loved discovering new dishes in restaurants and then recreating their versions at home. Now, Taffy often said that the way to a man's heart was through his stomach. And let me tell you, Duke loved to eat. <laughs> I mean, everything from jello molds to grand buffets, the rumpus room always had good food around. And of course, there was always a relish tray. <laughs> but boy, she really loved discovering new food. Later in life, my sister would do the same thing. And let me tell you something, Nancy loved her crock pot. Now, we must remember that back then, well, there weren't all these different ethnic foods on every corner. I mean, even in Italian restaurants were exotic in the 60s. But Taffy and Duke loved bringing us into the city to enjoy all those wonderful meals and all those fancy eating establishments. Now, when we got home, well, of course, Mother would start looking for the dishes so she could recreate them. And, of course, she went to her Bible, The Better Homes and Gardens, Famous Foods from Famous Places. Now, one of my favorites, of course, was when we went to the top of the fair at the 1964-65 World's Fair. There it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was so marvy, wasn't it? it? That fair was full of wonder, dreams of the future. Who knew the future would be like 2020, looks like? Hmm. Now listen, the top of the fair was absolutely glorious. Look at that. Glass enclosed, suspended high above the fair where you could actually see the New York City skyline. And oh, how I marveled being there. And the chef was Charles Pepinakis, who apparently was very famous for his chocolate three-way. <laughs> now, let me tell you, I'm not sure if Taffy had any three-ways in her kitchen, but well, one never knows. <laughs> Now, in the book, Chef Pepernakis shares his classic take on sauerbraten. Well, we actually had that when we ate there, and I just thought it was so fancy eating something from another country like that. Now, of course, I thought we were getting something like sauerkraut. Who knew it was meat and the national dish of Germany, no less? Mm. And, by the way, it came with something called ginger snap gravy. <gasps> Talk about exotic. Mm. I remember how good it smelled. Mm. And well, this was a classic example of my sister Nancy's cooking. She took this recipe, added a little booze to it, popped it in the crock pot, and voila! Mm -hmm. A feast for her family. So good. Oh boy. Now remember, all these recipes and tips will be on my website at www.dorasdeer.com forward slash girl, G-U-R-L, hyphen talk <laughs> oh who could that be and 
again. We're here and we're safe. We can take our masks off. Yes, we're COVID safe here at Doris Dears Girl Talk. You see, we had our, let's see, temperature check. We did our COVID rapid test. Yes. Right, and mass. Yes. But now we're safe. Aaron Kimmel, welcome to Doris Dears Girl Talk. Thank you for having me. Having you, yes. Uh, Aaron is actually my neighbor. We are very lucky that we live in an artist building here in New York that is just completely full of artists, which is really fantastic that we have this opportunity, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean we have a rehearsal room and yeah. it's kind of social and um, like our, we have, we have the best hallway here because we have an amazing jazz musician, actors, a model, oh, yeah. a touring, uh, another musician, she tours all around and uh, a Broadway actress and uh, singer dancer and, I mean, it's really amazing. We're very, very lucky. Yeah. So, well, I think cheers for being lucky cheers. today. We're drinking a Doris Deer grapefruit margarita. Perfect. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. cheers. Yeah. Mm, let's see how this is. Yeah, that's... Uh, Excellent. Day drinking. Always good, right? Always good. <laughs> so, Aaron, now you're... I actually met your mom. Your mom came in and hung out for a little while. I got yeah. to... You're from Pennsylvania? I am. You're yeah. What part Originally, of Pennsylvania? Uh, I'm from a town called Hollidaysburg, um, which is the only thing they're really known for is the home of the Slinky. <laughs> well, I enjoy a Slinky, <laughs> but they're also known for Aaron, now that you're this famous musician. Rhode Island's famous for you, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A Slinky, I would have had I known, I would have yeah. had a Slinky on set. <laughs> Come on, I loved a slinky. I remember as a kid, I would put it on the stairs in the rumpus room, and I was fascinated how that would work. How does that work? <laughs> it's just a spring rain, but how does it work? Yes. Oh my God, Doris. Um, so you went to Juilliard. I did. So, I mean, I'm always fascinated by people who go to like Juilliard and the big conservatories, because those are like the best of the best. Right. So, Tell me what that was like. I mean, is first of all, you come from a musical family, which I didn't know. Your mom was yes. taught music, and your dad had band, had a band. Um, my my mother's actually not musical at all, um, but she's the first to say that. Oh, all love to my mother. No, it's it's mostly from my father. My father oh. was a drummer. Um, they were both uh, school teachers by day. Ah, uh, school so, teachers. Yes, and so um, and he was in a like a wedding club date band, so they would work on the weekends. Which was strange because for the first couple of years of my life, I didn't see him play because they're private events. I couldn't go. Oh, right. So it was interesting. And there was no drums in the house. So that's why they always said I came by it honestly. That, you know, I was already showing like interest even though that wasn't around. It was like I was just seeing it. And was dad a drummer? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And then you're a drummer. So I, we, we have a picture, I think... Five years old, the first time you did a public appearance? That's my first public performance. Yeah, so it was his his gig, and um, I was just there, and I think it was the woman who was uh, promoting the event or something. At the sound check, he, you know, my, my big reward was he let me sit down and kind of, you know, and so she, she saw that, so I guess halfway through the concert, she came up to announce the sponsors or something, and she said, you know, can that, can that little kid come back? You know, as, you know, so I came back, I played something like Night Train or Sing 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 or something, yeah, something... But but so that's that picture, and you can see my father in the background. That's awesome. Yeah, that's and so that's that's uh, yeah, that's five something like that. Yeah. Wow. So then, um, so then you get into Juilliard, right. and what's Ju? I always think like Juilliard is this like, it's like a fantasy castle full of artists being artists, and then I think no, they're in class and they're probably really tough on them. But what what is that experience like? Like share with our audience, like what. What does that feel like? I mean, you're a young guy and you get into the school. Uh, it was interesting because I was, I mean, I was just coming right out of high school. I had never really, like, you know, Hollysburg is a very small town. I hadn't been, I wasn't really that well traveled necessarily. And so I came here, you know, fresh 18, full of hope and wonder, you know, that quickly changed. Um, <laughs> Welcome to New York. Uh, so, but uh, it's it's really intense because it's such a small school. You know, the, the four disciplines with dance, drama, the, the classical department. And at that time, the jazz studies department, which I was in, was only four or five years old. It was very new. It started oh. in 2001. So, uh, yeah, it was only maybe 30 students on, that's all instruments in that, in that, in that wow. division. So, yeah, and it was, um, it was a good time to be in New York. A lot of the, like, last... Uh, you know, group of jazz masters were still around. The school had a lot of money, and the so the the guests were incredible. 
uh, and you know, just by being in town, these guys are all in here, so it wasn't a big deal because you know, schools like you know, out in remote places, in the United States, they got to fly these people in, right? It's all the thing, but you know, these guys they're in town. walk down the street, exactly. <laughs> so, but yeah, it was uh, it was quite the learning curve, but yeah, that's it, you know. It was a, a great experience overall, and, and, and yeah, and, and it was a great conduit for me in New York City because yeah, that wouldn't have lasted long. Yeah, you know. I mean, you're right in the middle of it all. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the school's right, you know, uh, on the north end of Lincoln Center. So yeah, I mean, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And now you're back at Lincoln Center all the time, playing at like Dizzy's and places yeah, like that, right? Yeah, I play at Jazz Lincoln Center pretty often, um, which is down in Columbus Circle on the other end of it. So right, but that's really fantastic. You go to Juilliard and then you're playing at Lincoln Center. Right. I mean, you're kind of living the dream. I always tell my friends, like, you know, guys, we get to, I've been a professional 42 years in the business. I mean, we're kind of living the dream that people in all over the world have. Like, right. want to be in New York, right. only do what they want to do as work, and then live in a great building. Like, right. we kind of like, check, check, check. Right. And as tough as New York is, here we are, living the dream. Right. And you're, I'm a little older than you, <laughs> um, but... We're still, we're, I mean, it's fantastic. It's just like so good. Um, so tell me about like, you know, COVID has changed the entire world. I mean, it came out of like, it, all of a sudden we heard about it, then it here. Right. New York City, the entire city shut down. But how, I know you're out doing gigs outside. How right. has it changed your artistry? Because I think like I was here during 9-11 and things shut down. I right. mean, every, things like this really change. I know for me it changes who I am as an artist. Right. It gives me due direction when, like, a parent passes or something happens major in life. It changes your artistry. How is COVID sort of shaping your artistry right now? Is it has it caused a big shift in how you feel about it? What you're playing? Right. Like, talk to me about that kind of stuff. Uh, I mean, like you said, it came out of nowhere because I was yeah I was on the road until like March 14th or something, and I had a, my schedule was packed, and then within you know like. In two days, months of, of stuff was just canceled. I said, okay. No, yeah. You know, I, I got some time on my hands, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, after the initial shock of it, it's been it's been interesting for me because I'm like, well, I got so much time off. So things that, it's usually I'm on the road, I'm doing a lot of stuff that like, you know, like, I'll get to that, I'll get to that. You know, it's things I put off. And so, um, including like creative things about my playing that I want to reassess and take the time to do. So, it's been yeah, like I said, after it took me a minute to find the positive, but it's, it's been cool. And now, in the past maybe two months, um, you know, thankfully the weather's been conducive. There's been like a lot of outdoor stuff popping up, which isn't usually the case here. Right. In the summer. Um, you know, because, yeah, unfortunately, I mean, nothing, I mean, all the clubs, all the inside stuff is, yeah. is, is on ice for, for a while. But, but it's been, it's been interesting. It's been, and it's been funny too, seeing the guys who are always busy and always like, you know, like, the most in demand guys they're now playing these gigs it's like you know it's funny it's, it's everyone's kind of like been equalized on a certain level because everyone's at home everyone's you know. it doesn't matter who you are yeah you're all gonna sit outside that restaurant and play exactly like you're all the same at this point so yeah it's, it's been uh humbling uh yeah <laughs> and there's a part of me that hopes some of that stays around even when we get to go back inside i kind of like this outdoor new york over the summer it's been nice you know i lived in europe for years and it seems very much like what I live, like in Copenhagen, it, all summer you're outside. Right. You eat outside, performers are outside, bands are outside. There's a part of that I like that I hope, you know, we find that we can bring it back every year. Right. Because there's something about that I like and it seems, it, it sort of levels that playing field a little, which is yeah. kind of nice for us sometimes that we yeah. all sort of come to the same level and you get to sit in with guys who you normally maybe would not be able to because exactly. they're at some fancy club that you're not like invited in. Right, right. Now you you mentioned that you were on tour. Well, who are you touring with? Um, I'm a member of the Benny Green Trio. That's what I've been doing for a few years, and then also play with another pianist, Aaron Deal, and uh, this younger singer, Veronica Swift. Um, those are people I work with the most right now. Um, but it's you know it's drums for hire, and it's New York City, so <laughs> anytime, yes. anywhere, you know, so it's like it's it's always and and and, and that's completely by design. Um, I like that. I've always wanted that. I don't, I like the variety. I don't, yeah. you know, the thought of having to do the same nine to five or something. I just like, uh. you mean you don't want to play in a Broadway pit eight shows a week? Come on. <laughs> I have subbed on Broadway. But, oh, really? What shows have you done? Um, I did this show after midnight, which was. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I had a bass, one of my bass players, uh, Tom, 
I think was in After Midnight. Oh, maybe. Tom Hubbard? Yeah, was uh, Tom Hubbard in that, I think? I can't remember. He might have been one of the other subs. So yeah. So, you know, I didn't... People he, sub in in all, all yeah, those shows. All but Yeah. It's interesting being in a pit, and yeah. full-time job is right. like eight shows a week. Even as an actor, it's a lot. Right. It's a lot. It's really... <laughs> but I like the variety, too. I mean, I love hiring drummers in, and you have to... I have to hire you in to do a Doris Deer show. Anytime. I mean, ah, oh, you yeah. heard it here. Anytime. It's documented. At a good price. Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> well, cheers to that. Cheers, Aaron. Cheers. Thank, Thank you so you. much for coming by. Doris Deer's Girl Talk. My pleasure. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Hi, Doris Deer here. I'm sorry to interrupt the regularly scheduled program, but I've got an important announcement and I wanted to tell you about it. Mark your calendars, December 19th, right here on Broadway On Demand. I'll be streaming from the Triad Theater right here in New York City, the Doris Deer Christmas Special. So come on in and meet some of my friends, hear some great holiday music, and we'll be telling stories of Christmas past and present. So check back here on Broadway On Demand for all the information and tickets. I'll see you then, and back to the program. Bye. Oh, hi. Welcome to the Bar Cart, the place where we make the cocktails that we drink here in the Rumpus Room. Now, on today's show, we enjoyed a refreshing favorite, the Margarita. Now, the Margarita is related to a popular Mexican and American drink called the Daisy. And Margarita is Spanish for Daisy. Simple, right? It's remade with tequila instead of brandy. Now, it became popular during the Prohibition time as people drifted over the border to go find alcohol. We always find alcohol. <laughs> now, as I always look into my cocktail Bible, the one and only Esquire drink book, well, lo and behold, the first known publication of a margarita recipe was in the December 1953 issue of Esquire with a recipe calling for an ounce of tequila, a dash of triple sec, and the juice a half of a lime or lemon. Well, now as always, I like creating my own version of the drink. I love it, and I created a special version just for you, the Doris Deer Grapefruit Margarita. <laughs> now this is a really refreshing take on a classic, so let's get on with it. Now, we're gonna pour into our shaker filled with ice, five ounces, of red grapefruit juice. I love grapefruit juice, don't you? Four ounces of white tequila. White tequila! Hmm. About a one and a half ounces of Cointreau or triple sec, either one. And about a half ounce of simple syrup. And now this simple syrup I made with plain granulated sugar. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, it's filling up the shaker. It's a big drink. I love that. Give it a shake. Get your workout. Ugh, it's the most I've done in weeks. Hmm. Now we're just gonna strain that over a glass filled with ice. Oh, that looks delicious. Oh, it smells so good too. And we're gonna add a grapefruit slice. Ah, ha ha. And there it is, a yummy, refreshing cocktail for those steamy summer nights. Well, or days if you like. Well, I hope you enjoyed your stay in the rumpus room today and mm, mm. wow, that is good. <laughs> you know, I love when friends drop by and we share some fun ideas and bring some, sing it with me, joy to the world. <laughs> it's so much fun. And don't forget, you can head over to www.dorisdeer.com forward slash girl hyphen talk for all the tips and the recipes that we did today. Now, please stay safe and hugs and love from Doris Deer. And remember, a dress doesn't get you anywhere. It's the life you live in the dress that matters. <laughs> See you soon. Cheers. Mm. South of the border. Uh, uh, uh. Thank you.